You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you mount toward the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Endless Labyrinth of Night Roads. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? I'll save the Patreon stuff for the end of the video. Anyway, alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Ojivushi Trail, a uh, small number of roads that include a dozen or so less frequently used connections. Less frequently? Why? Unless your destination is a small town like ours, there are better roads than this one. Relaxing, though. By the time of day, I would figure that we jump to a different time zone. Yep, it's almost 5 p.m. over here, two plus hours to the west. Damn, wait, is it then possible to travel with this thing around the world in such a way so that it will always be daytime for you? If you, were, if you were to make a good route, then yes, very much so. Though more often these time zone jumps just screw with my sleep schedule. Like, like it wasn't already screwed enough. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's just make a stop over there. Not like I had any specific destination in mind. Wait, can you get us to a... Can you get us to Voshens? Uh, the shortest route includes about six connections with a bunch of empty space in between. If I were to guess, it would take at least eight hours to get there. Well, maybe some other time. We'll see, buddy. Okay, now let's rearrange into the interior a bit. Four. God, he called it four, really. Give me those bags. Uh, lower back seats. And open the back door. How do you even manage to fit anything other than your garbage here? I'm very good at Tetris. So what? Is this how you spend your free time away from home? Find a nice view and a, just a chill bit of air near it? And just chill near it? Uh, sometimes. I want some, want some warm regular tea. Hope that is not mango. Forest berries. Ooh, nice. Looking back on the day, or any day when we meet after not seeing each other for a while, really, I always stress myself out too much about how things might have changed. How we might have changed. But then I meet you again and stuff just feels right. It's not like we haven't changed, at the very least in terms of haircuts, but I don't know, it's just comforting. Man, you can be so sappy sometimes. You're aware of it, right? But you know, a nice sappy. You want a reminder of how sappy you were during the Lunar Eclipse Festival of my graduation year? Hey, you promised not to mention it. <laughs> okay, okay. Huh. Do you ever feel like the moon is about to fall on us? Uh, metaphorically or literally? A little bit of both, really? Certain days it feels like my life is about to cut, is about to cut short. And whenever I think of the way it would go, for some reason it is a moon. Uh, falling. Destroying everything and everyone, everyone I love with me. Oh, someone's been playing too much Majora's Mask. Well, if that is actually how you would go, I'd have to congratulate you. You might outlive civilization itself. Still your title, still your title of oldie, dude. I'm younger than you by almost a year. If I'm old, then so are you. And yet somehow it doesn't work that way, does it? Hmm. Thank you. Water time. I don't know. It's just as if everything and everyone is rushing past me. And then there's me, doing my own thing. Back in the day, I was so precise and determined. The whole drifter thing was an outlet for me. A way to rebel against the world. I'm just another part of it. A rebel against oneself. You know what's the problem with growing up? Hit me with this epiphany of yours. All those books and movies you watched with and read, written by folks who either go through crap trying to sort everything out along the way, or smartasses who have an abstract idea of understanding and want others to think the same way. So we eat all that up as kiddos and think that our adult life would be that way. All that complicated, dramatized, highly conceptual stuff. And what it isn't, we just feel empty. We wait for even bad stuff that can never come. Conclusion? Well, the logical thing that first comes to mind would be a try to apply the lessons we learn from fictional scenarios while not forgetting to also contextualize them within our own lives. Uh, but I take it it's not what you have in mind. No, we just have to stop thinking. I... Is that really what you came up with? Hey, you're doing it again. Turn off your brain box and just chill. Feel the fog around us. Sound of wind going through the leaves. Sure, whatever. Now you're talking my language. You know, it's been a really nice change of pace for me. As good as getting out of college was, I was also stressful to figure out everything that came with moving. A lot of my time passed since I felt as lonely as, as I was in the past month. Having you by my side today means a lot to me. In a way, it is the beginning of a new era. Both of us back in the town we wanted to escape. Some, escape so much as teens. 
What do you think is waiting for us? I mean, does it really matter? Right now, we're here, enjoying a nice day that already finished its waiting. Should we be so rude as to not thank it? Hmm, as rarely as it happens, you have a point. Oh, if it's a game you want to play then, okay, Weasel Face, come here. Time for a photo. Dude, you know how I hate taking photos. More reasons for me to take one, isn't it? Nice animation work, damn. Say cheese. You're a jerk. Ah, end of chapter two, okay. Ah, oh, that was nice, though. Oh, man. End of chapter two, okay. Would you be interested to read some development commentary? Yeah, sure. Alright. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? Be it 30 minutes or nearly a year. It was quite heartwarming to see the response to the first chapter's release, especially in comparison to my older works. And if your feelings towards this chapter was even slightly close to mine, I'm sure this, has, this one hasn't disappointed either. Well then, take your pick. What you interested in? Uh... Oh, wow. Oh. There's a lot here, okay. Um... Development of this chapter. I started the development of the second chapter shortly after releasing the first one in September of 2022 finishing up in late August 2023. That puts this chapter's development time at about 11 months. During that time, I didn't have almost any kind of internet connection for about five months. Jesus. Leaving me in a very, uh, non-optimistic state of mind, as if to say lightly. This has caused me to work in one-off spurts of inspiration, which leads to overall slower work. But then again, without internet, I had no way to work on commissions during that period, being a freelance artist and such, which led to more free time in that regard. So it's hard to say if the second chapter would have come out sooner or later should that five-month period never happen. On top of that, this chapter is a bigger and bigger in scale, featuring more one-shots and comic pages establishing the atmosphere, vibe, and feel of the environment. Not to mention the animation, of which I'll talk more of in its own section. Process of making. As I previously said in the dev comments of the first chapter, I decided to try and make a VN because it gave me more freedom than comics. Essentially, what I have with Eleanor is, is an independent, no-budget animated short film series combined with the medium of comics. Unlike in regular animated media, I can focus my efforts on what really matters for me. Going for one-shots, animatic-like sequences, and using animation only when I want to for the sake of strengthening the moment. Rather than always having to, if it were a regular animated production. And as opposed to comics, I have more space for characters to just talk without having to either camp, I think to either cramp a lot of text on one page or drawing an additional page or panels for it as well as the opportunity to direct the flow of the scenes more like animation. And while, yes, more space to talk can lead to dialogue becoming bloated, I'm trying not to let that happen by leaving only what's most important while not stripping down to its spare essentials. Okay. Production order goes something like this. Starting off with the basics of any story, we have conceptualization, which isn't really a solid step because it's done during the development of this previous chapters and in general, and in just in general free time. Or, in the case of the first chapter, uncanonical comic prologue from back in 2020. Then structure, establishing the essential scenes and have everything jump off from them. Or concept art based on the established scenes. Next two steps comprise the bulk of the work, starting off with storyboarding and writing. In regular animation production, you either have a script lead series with storyboarding being done based on them, or a storyboard lead series with script being written alongside each storyboard. Personally, I'm a fan of the latter. For both its workflow and results such as Adventure Time, Steven Universe, and Samurai Jack to name a few, as absolutely amazing and inspiring pieces of animation. In case of Eleanor, it's mostly storyboard-led as well, with only exception being static scenes, scenes where you can see text boxes, but even those start out with the, with the uh, sketching done to the scene itself before starting to write for it. And finally, sketching, coloring, and cleaning, actually making it somewhat presentable, starting off with the static scenes as those appear on screen for the longest time. As I start working on this step, I ask my proofreaders to salvage the grammatical catastrophe that is my script, and for my musician to start composing the OST for the chapter. Thank you know. What are these things? Alright, alright, good job. Okay. Hmm. Funny. And then it's done. You struggle to grasp how something you constantly worked on for more than half a year is now complete. Animation. As you might have noticed, this chapter was quite more prevalent on the animation side of things. I've been interested in animation for a long time. After all, it's the media that inspired me to become an artist in the first place. Throughout my years, I've experimented with it here and there, starting from 2019. 
But I've always been more preoccupied with regular art or comics. So working on media that allows me to combine comics and animation gave me more incentive to experiment with it. Over the course of this chapter, there are three types of animation that should be noted. Parallax animation, an engine frame-by-frame -frame animation, and external two-engine animation. Parallax animation, or to simply put, fake depth, or 2.5D. The first static scene of the chapter is a, primary, is a primary example of it. A set of background images moving at different speeds depending on how close or how far from the camera they are. Then we have an engine frame-by-frame -frame animation, requiring each of its frames to be included in the files of the game, which if you can guess, might lead to a bloated size of game files. So this kind of animation is best used within low frame rate animations or when the frames are lacking in detail. And lastly, external to engine animation. The only case of such in this in this chapter being in this chapter being entering the Twilight Highway animation, which has been largely done frame by frame in OpenTunes animation program. Only exceptions to frame by frame rules is the arm transition, the camera panning out, and the car going down the road. Out of everything in it, the lighting animation on silhouettes and especially the head turning animation, which was done in just done on one second, were one second were the most time consuming ones. Looking back on it now, I should have put less effort into the last one, going rather for two seconds in order to put more work in the transition between silhouettes and to add more details and color to color to Mike before he goes to before he does the head turn. Yeah, one second animations are really, really time consuming. I think the average one is like two to three seconds. But hey, you live and you learn. At least I haven't sent, spent an insane amount of time cleaning it. I can only imagine the nightmare that would have been, only to then discover that the WebM file format room. RenP requires for external video files to work roughs up the video quality. At least it's light in size. Overall, it was an interesting experience, and if anything, its sudden appearance combined with the first entry into the Twilight Highway will make it a memorable one. One of the things you might have noticed both in Twilight Highway entrance and past Jeremy running through his, pre his present self animations is the use of different brushes. Initially, I meant to use more I meant to use it more frequently in both animations and sequences, like the one where Mike nearly falls down the bridge akin to how some panels in the first chapter weren't properly cleaned. But on top of proving to be nearly as much effort as cleaning, they also end up being, lo being larger in file size compared to the regular clean ones. Therefore, the only instances they're used are those two animations and dev comments. Smaller stuff. Starting off with something that came from people's amusing struggle regarding Eleanor's abbreviation back during the release of first chapter, while part of me still wants to keep it as somewhat as of an open secret, it would be easier to just say that it's pronounced as Eleanor. Secondly, synesthesia. Fascinating condition, especially sound of vision one. If you have even the slightest interest in it, check out the animations of, of uh, Michael, Michael Gagney, who has done a number of synesthesia-related stuff, including one that most of those who have even a small experience with watching popular animated films have already seen. That being the sequences in Ratatouille when we see visual depictions of how Remy tastes food. Then there's the interior of Instant Hawk. You have no idea how proud I am of it. And you might think that it's because of all the products on the shelves and such. But no! I'm proud that I finally nailed down a color combo of bright blue, yellow, and pink. For whatever reason, this combo always felt off to me. I had to give this palette quite some time to come around into what it is now. Other than that, the background was also one of the first ideas I had for this chapter, most inspired by the interiors of grocery stores at 5 centimeters per second in Yakuza 0. What's this and why is it locked? Alright y'all, I have to get ready to go to work, so I will continue this later. Alright, I'll be back shortly.